two grand here, three grand there. It's all just part of an honest day's work for Rick Harrison and the old man of Pawn Stars. His shop will make hundreds of sales a week, but every now and then something special comes through that gets the guy sweating. Here are the top 15 most expensive buys on Pawn Stars. The Harrisons were floored, hook, line, and sinker when a centuries-old ship bell was brought into their Las Vegas pawn shop by a woman who was looking to make some fast cash. When presented with the bell, Richard Old Man Harrison turned his nose up at it, claiming that it must be a reproduction. The woman who brought it in wasn't thinking it was worth much either, but wanted to give it a shot anyway. It wasn't until they consulted with an expert did they discover that this old ship bell is from 1602 and is worth around $15,000. The Harrisons jumped at the deal when they found out this bell was an original and immediately listed it at a treasure auction catalog. When Adam, a vintage bookseller, brought in a tattered old book of Mormon to the Harrison's pawn shop, a few eyebrows were raised due to the fact that old books are so easy to reproduce. Rick knows that when it comes to pawning books, you've got to be extra careful. So when the owner Adam valued the book at $25,000, Rick knew he had to bring in an expert. After the expert studied the book, she ended up giving it a much higher appraisal than what the owner pitched. She estimated that the value of the book was around $40,000, which is not so crazy to believe considering it was printed by the Mormon prophet himself, Joseph Smith, and was the last book of Mormon to be published in his lifetime. Richard gave Adam $24,000 for the book instead of $25,000 because that's just how Pawn Stars roll. The Pawn Stars hit the jackpot when one man walked into their shop with a gold bar that was originally found in a shipwreck centuries ago. The owner was apparently cleaning out his grandfather's attic and found the bar tucked away in a box. They priced it initially at $24,000, but that quickly turned to $50,000 when a shipwreck expert was consulted. The bar dates back to 1554 and was apparently one of the many treasures found in the famous Padre Island shipwreck just off of Texas. Rick purchased the bar for $35,000, saving himself fifteen dollars Talk about pirate's treasure. Just say the word Fender and you know you're dealing with a luxurious guitar. Flick himself was the one who brought this highly valuable guitar into the Pawn Star shop, and when the Pawn Stars saw this musical relic, they nearly lost their minds. Flick recorded songs for the Beatles and Tom Jones on that thing, not to mention his famous guitar riff in the first James Bond movie. Rick ended up taking the guitar for $55,000. Not bad. The car rental company Hertz teamed up with famed entrepreneur Roger Penske to build a fleet of limited edition Mustangs. There's only 150 of these babies in existence, only 10 drive standard, and one of those 10 belongs to car collector John. He walked into Rick's garage asking for $85,000 and said he wouldn't go lower than $60,000. Rick was a little skeptical, so he asked NASCAR driver Joey Logano to take it for a test drive and give a second opinion. He dubbed it being worth $75,000, which John seemed to be pretty happy about, but Rick couldn't help but go Pawn Star on him and drop his offer down to $60,000. At the end of the day, John took the deal. His sleek and sexy Mustang is now officially pawned. Rick and the old man will do some pretty crazy things for money, including jetting across the country to find a specific gold coin that a customer requested. The coin in question is a $50 piece that was commissioned by the United States government upon completion of the Panama Canal. The customer said he would pay at the most $70,000 if Rick could somehow manage to track down the coin. Well, Rick did find the coin, but was only able to haggle down to $67,500. He didn't end up making that much on the deal, but at least he's made one more customer happy. One of the Pawn Stars' biggest buys was a 1932 custom-built Ford Roadster. It's only one of the most iconic cars of the 20th century. No big deal at all. This car is almost an entire century old, yet the owner Mike has somehow been able to keep this rare vehicle in stellar condition. He's put a ton of money and time into maintaining this relic, and was hoping to strike a deal of no less than $70,000 with Rick. After getting an appraisal from an expert claiming the car is worth between 70 and 75 grand, Mike was haggled down to a cool $68,250 for the car, and in the and took the offer.
This valuable piece of metal was brought into the Pawn Star shop by a man who won it randomly in a poker game, which seems to be one of the most typical ways people come into possession of rare coins these days, especially in Las Vegas. The man thought it was maybe worth $20,000 tops, but after consulting a coin expert, it was discovered that this rare American coin is worth between 50 and 100 grand. That's insane. Apparently there are only 10 to 12 of these in existence, making it one of the most rare and coveted coins of all time. Rick ended up striking a deal with the gambling man for $80,000. It's always the small things in life that end up being the most valuable, right? Once considered the holy grail of Gibson guitars, this piece of musical history just simply could not be ignored when it was brought into Rick's shop by the original owner himself, Stephen Stills, of the folk indie band Crosby. Rick was instantly captivated by how cool this guitar was, and knew he had to have it. The fact that it came with the original bill of sale signed by Stephen Stills himself only made the deal juicier. After going back and forth for a while on it, Rick was able to snag this beauty for $85,000. That's one expensive instrument. You know how we said that the SJ200 was the holy grail of Gibson guitars? Scratch that. This 1961 Gibson belonged to the legendary Les Paul and his wife Mary Ford, who wrote classic hits like Bye Bye Blues and the Tennessee Waltz. Mary's nephew brought the guitar into Rick's shop expecting a pretty penny for his custom Les Paul guitar, and the Pawn Stars definitely took notice. Rick immediately recognized that these babies are incredibly rare, and the fact that this guitar belonged to Les Paul himself just pushes the value over the edge. In the States, the invention of the modern electric guitar is actually credited to Les Paul and his wife Mary, who were considered to be the trailblazers of rock and roll. Knowing the history and the high value of this thing, Rick decided to consult a guitar expert on how much the Gibson is really worth. Upon entering the shop, the guitar expert was nearly lost for words. He noted that the guitar is incredibly well documented, and has been featured on numerous record covers making this instrument somewhat of a celebrity. There's a lot of wear to it, but that's just proof that it's an original. He said that if it's a forgery, it's the best forgery on the planet. The expert said it would be fair for Rick to buy it for $150,000, but Mary's nephew had a higher price in mind. He suggested $250,000, but Rick wouldn't budge. They met well below the pitch value at $90,000. I'm sure Rick is singing right now. Patriots defensive end Brock Williams hit a rough patch financially after he was forced into retirement due to injuries. He needed some fast cash, so he decided to hit the gold and silver pawn shop and see how much he could get for his 2001 Super Bowl ring. The ring itself is legendary, and apparently broke all the rules of Super Bowl jewelry design. Super Bowl rings are only allowed to be 10 carats, weigh so much, and have a certain amount of diamonds. The New England Patriots completely rebelled against these rules and designed their ring to their own personal standards. As of 2001, it was the biggest Super Bowl ring in history, and contains a ridiculous ridiculous amount of diamonds. Rick bought the ring for only $2,600 and set it up as a loan. Brock had 120 days to come back and reclaim the ring and pay off his loan, but he never returned to the shop, so now it belongs to gold and silver. Rick thinks that this ring is easily worth 100 grand. He's been putting off selling it for a while, and says he'll only let it go if someone comes in and offers him a crazy amount of money for it. I have a feeling Rick just likes to wear the ring on his off hours. The Lincoln Roadster was known to be one of the most powerful cars back in the day. It had a V12 horsepower engine and was made with the luxury driver in mind. When Rick and the old man came across this vintage beauty, they knew they had to have it. The car was in great condition, which made it pretty difficult for Rick to haggle. He didn't make much of a fuss, and in the end bought it for $95,000, which the owner ended up pushing back over the counter to buy $95,000 worth of gold. Two deals in one. Silver is a hot commodity these days, and Rick knows it. So when a man came into his shop with a huge hunk of silver, he had no choice but to make a deal with him. Apparently the man had purchased the silver over 12 years ago, when his father told him to start investing in precious metals, and now that silver has gone up in value, he knew he could get a lot of money for it. Rick didn't want to let this deal pass him by, so he recruited a silver tester to make sure it was genuine. Once the metal was confirmed to be pure, Rick instantly made a deal with the man and bought the silver for $111,000. If there's silver in the Nevada hills, Rick's gonna find it. Silver's dandy, but nothing is more valuable than gold. I guess there's a reason why Rick named his shop Gold and Silver, because when a man came in with four gold bars of about one kilogram each, Rick didn't even flinch. He knew he had hit the jackpot and made a deal as quickly as he could. Rick ended up buying the gold for $128,000, knowing that he'll be able to get his money back and then some pretty quickly. People who buy gold often know what they want, so it was a no-brainer for Rick.
anything owned by John F. Kennedy seems to be of immaculate value. I mean, if you were blessed to be alive during his reign as president, it isn't hard to see why. When Rick was presented with a box of cigars that used to sit on John F. Kennedy's desk in the Oval Office, he knew that there would be a ton of Kennedy fans waiting on bended knee to shell out a pretty penny for this piece of history. The seller also knew how valuable the box was, and asked for $95,000 for it. Rick managed to haggle down to $60,000, which the seller thought was fair. Joke's on him, though, because a few weeks later, Rick sold the cigar box at an auction for $575,000, purchased out by the publisher of Cigar Aficionado magazine. I guess it pays to be in the pawning business. So there you have it, the most expensive buys in Pawn Stars history. Kinda makes me think I'm in the wrong business.